fourth gear at 25 miles an hour. Let's really push it. Sounds great. Mm, taste of England, Victoria sponge. This, lady and gentlemen, is the new Triumph Tiger 1200. Today, I'm gonna to be taking this bike on a bit of a jaunt. I'm actually gonna head down to Arundel to see, look at the 10th century Arundel Castle, an amazing condition castle from the 10th century. So I thought, what better bike to, as it's new to the market, give it a bit of a run, see what it's like. The weather is potentially gonna tip down with rain. We can have a full test of this machine. So join me while we do a little bit of a, a trip test review with a bit of a destination and a bit of 10th century castle thrown in for good measure. What more can you ask for? Jopsy, roll the intro. Look at this. No, it's not a CB radio. This is the Insta360 on a selfie stick. So I'll sort of try something new today, but uh, <laughs> Look at that. Does look a little bit ridiculous, doesn't it? But it's all about the shots, not about what you look like. So the first thing you notice about the new Tiger, it is a very big motorcycle. Now I'm six foot two, 20 stone, and even, even I am a little bit sort of intimidated by the sheer size of this machine. I think it's one of the biggest adventure bikes sort of on the market, you know? Let's, let's push it off the push it off the centre stand, put the side stand down, but you know even the rear seat is really, obviously the, the, the passenger, the drivers, the rider's seat is adjustable, I've actually got that in a higher position to be fair, but look how big like the passengers, even like swinging your leg over is, you know, it's it's a big old machine this, that's all I'm saying. So it's certain, I don't know if it's one to really suit the shorties this. I'll be interested to see how Andy, the Mizzleton Flyer, is getting on with this machine. Uh, the Tiger 1200, the Rally Pro, that's the bike that really Chopsy should be riding. And anyway, I don't know why you're listening to this guy, he's all about power and wheelies. He doesn't even like adventure bikes. Who said that? Was that supposed to be me? I believe it was Mavis, yes. He needs to get a grip. Don't worry, he hasn't got a clue. He hasn't got a clue. So today, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to be heading down to Arundel. It's about 80 miles, something like that. Um, I'm going to take a sort of twisty route down, try and do, do sort of really give this bike a good test on all sorts of roads. And um, I know I did do the uh, the 44 teeth group test on this machine. I'm not sure if that video is going to be out yet, or whether I've already done that comparison with the GS, the Multistrada, and the Super Adventure from KTM. So I've already sort of compared this bike to the other adventure bikes on the market. But this is more just about the Tiger. So I'm not really going to compare this to anything else in this video. Now this is just really to see what this bike is like with a bit of a bit more time on it. You know, now I've come to become accustomed to the machine. Ooh. This is the GT Pro version. So not the base one, the GT Pro. So this has a few little extras on it, um, like heated grips, the crook shifter and blipper. Uh, it doesn't have the heated seat, that's still an option. But you know, this, is, this, is, this has a few extras on the machine compared to standing at a centre stand, all that sort of stuff, you know. But once you're aboard, it is a lovely, lovely place to be. And I think the biggest surprise jumping on this is just how easy it is to ride. It's so smooth, like the gear change is just perfect on that on that quick shifter. You know, it's the clutch is nice, it's actually got a hydraulic clutch up here as well it, it's just it's just very very pleasant the suspension is obviously fully electronic on the gt pro that's another that's another sort of extra with the gt so you've got fully electronic suspension at the moment this is in the uh, the sports mode but even in the sports mode on this bike it's still uh, a comfortable suspension setup you know it's not one of those super sporty adventure bikes this this is more along more akin to the gs i think the comfort on this on a bit of a run is going to be really impressive this seat is really thick it's not thin you know it's a little bit thin to, but it's thinner towards the front so you can get your legs down but there's still plenty of seat behind you you know my, my bottom is fully cushioned by the seat 
I don't like it on these adventure bikes where they give you a thin seat so shorties can get their feet down but it sacrifices comfort if you've got a wider bum you know and people buying adventure bikes tend to be a bit older and yeah they have wider bottoms so I can tell this is going to be a really really comfortable bike a few stats on this bike 1160 cc engine 148 horsepower so nearly 150 horsepower and this thing does go we'll give this a little bit of a workout in a minute but this thing is pretty rapid 130 newton meters of torque and a beautiful sound 245 kilos wet so you know it, it's it, basically what triumph are doing with this they're, they're beating the gs every stat <laughs> they're beating the gs so it's lighter than the gs it's more powerful than the gs you know gs beta gs beta that's what we're trying to build here and uh, i think actually they've done a damn fine good job with this bike but is it a gs beta you're gonna have to wait for my comparison review hello <laughs> how's the views from back there a little bit odd i'd imagine it may be absolutely terrible but i thought i'd try something a little bit different and as you can see with the insta 360 the selfie stick i've got that on you can't actually see it in the footage can you looks like it's a little mini drone following me along that's the invisible selfie stick part of the insta 360 which is it should make a pretty cool view from back there but then again it may be just a little bit odd let's see this bike cost £16,400 for this GT Pro version and the Tiger range starts at 14600 I think that's right if it's wrong I'll pop it on the screen with a correction but I think that's it so you know starting at 14.6 not too bad 16.4 could be 16.7 and you get all the electronic suspension and all the other good stuff which you really want oh listen to it i love the sound of this engine let's do that let's bang it down second gear listen to this engine that's what the t-plane gives you that that noise that sounds great sounds absolutely lovely loads of power absolutely bags of power on this but you don't need any more power than that on an adventure bike that is absolutely enough do not need more let's have this guy hang on we've got time to chuck it in sport there's a sporty section here let's go to the sport setting oh suspension's all firmed up nicely now throttle response is slightly more crisp definitely less dive on that suspension bit of rear brake paddle around yeah it, ha it handles very well it handles very very well it changed direction blooming nice actually you know the weight for the fuel is all quite high it's not you know low down I'd say it, you know it doesn't flick and dart around quite as well as the GS but it's not half bad you know you don't think oh I can't change direction on it yeah it's, it's pretty pretty decent from a direction change point of view you're still up there oh, that's a... <laughs> in case that is pretty rubbish we'll do a slight change have a bit of that let's have a bit of side angle how's that gonna be oh. about to kick its head in well, this is goodwood race course not the uh, circuit the horse racing course which is just up the road from the uh, the circuit I don't think I've ever been to goodwood horse racing definitely looks like something's on today 
There's my high Insta360 when I want it. I've taken it down now. now I want that high view. Go on, get in there. Good, good races. There it is. Must be some sort of a horse racing event on today. Onward. Okay, let's give it a little bit of a razz up here, shall we? First gear. Sounds beautiful. Loads of lovely engine box roar, you know, noise from the airbox. You know, that's the way, that's how you get a nice sounding bike these days. Gone are the days of having noisy exhausts, you know, they just can't do it. If you're a five, all of that noise comes out the airbox. So, and that sounds lovely. That does sound beautiful. I do love the sound of this thing. And listen to how it sounds lower down the river range. I love that, 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 oh, that T-plane sound. And it's a really tractable, drivable engine. So if we go down to 2,000 revs, I'm in fourth gear, I'm fourth gear at 25 miles an hour. Let's really push it. So drivable. So, so drivable. Unlike a V-twin, which would be, you know, it would be shaking your fillings out if you tried that. This triple engine is so drivable. That's unbelievable. Let's go down even further than that. Fourth gear. Let's see if we can do 20 miles an hour in fourth. It's not... It won't even go any less than this. It's more or less at idle now. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 20, 21. Come on, 20 miles an hour. That is more or less on tick over now. So from tick over in fourth gear. It'll pull cleanly. That is impressive. This is a great bit of road down here. This is coming down through to, to Goodwood. Not the horse racing course, but the circuit, motor racing circuit. And I think actually the Festival of Speed's on in a couple of weeks, isn't it? So they're probably prepping up for the Festival of Speed down here, I'd imagine. But this bit of road which runs through the, the downs here is, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lovely, lovely bit of road, this. Shame I'm stuck behind the old Honda Jazz again. My nemesis, the Honda Jazz. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Jazz, you're, you're, you're wasting some beautiful roads here. Even though it's not the sportiest of adventure bikes, you can still have fun and enjoy the twisties on this. You know, it's rewarding to ride. I thought I had to go left then, I don't. It's rewarding to ride fast to throw through corners you know even if it is edging on a more comfortable mile munching type machine you know not not the sportiest of adventure bikes but it's still fun to be sporty on it and at the end of the day i'm not sure someone on a v4s multistrada would actually get away from you anyway <laughs> on the road so it's irrelevant really I'll tell you, after, after you've done a couple of hundred miles, you'll be crying out for this comfortable seat compared to the one on the Multistrada. So let's go into the menu again. Now I've gone to comfort. Let's see if the damping is adjusting with the modes. Yeah, so, the, so when I'm in road mode, the suspension is in normal. So it's not even in super comfortable. Morning. It's just, it's just in normal. So, uh, let me go back again. So how do I get a com the really comfortable mode? See, there's no sort of comfort mode, it's just road. So I suppose you get you go into road. I wanted to go left up there. Oh, ball bags. Hang on, pulling over. Pulling over here. We'll spin it around a minute. Too busy playing with the settings and not looking at the sat now. <laughs> there's a lot of distractions on a modern motorcycle. Spin in here. No access for. Oh, what's going on down here? They're building something for Festival of Speed by the look of it. So, anyway, what was I saying? So, if I want to make it really comfortable, let's go into the. Uh, what we've got here now, see. Oh, let's go back. 
<sighs> oh, it's, I do find this whole tr interface on this bike a little bit irritating. Suspension, let us go super comfortable. Super comfortable on the suspension. Let's see what difference that makes. So when I'm in road mode, I'm in super comfortable suspension. <laughs> oh yeah! Look how soft that is, jumping up and down on it. Oh yeah, alright, calm down. He's staring at me, thinks I'm an absolute lunatic. He was not far wrong, let's be honest. But yeah, look, I don't know if this will come out, but that is really, really bouncy. Really, really bouncy. Wow, yeah, that's quite a surprise. If I go back into the uh, sport mode. Sport mode. Yeah, it's, it's much stiffer. Still, still got a bit of bounce there. <laughs> 70 is just a, a Nats whisker over 4,000 revs. So that is super, super cruisy. Talking of cruisy. Let's set the uh, cruise control. It's got cruise control, none of that adaptive stuff as I mentioned, but it's a good system. You just go set, set, set to turn it on, set to set your speed. So two presses, you've got your cruise control on. Wind-wise, the screen in the highest position, the wind is here. So you know, right at the top part of my helmet, and I'm six foot two. So my body here, no, you know, very calm air here. It's not until here that I'm getting a bit of air. So there's a bit of noise, a bit of turbulence around the very top of my helmet. So if I had a little one of those jobbies, yeah, that's the noise gone though. So I had a little deflector here, that's the noise gone. So I'll probably have one of those if I had this bike and I was planning, you know, a bit of a run on it like this. But very comfortable just uh, sat at speed like this with the cruiser. Do it all day, all day long. Sounds lovely. Oh, Castle Gates. We're not getting close to Arundel yet, but uh, we're getting a bit of uh, but a few sights to look at. Right, so I think we're coming into Arundel now. This is the. Uh, it's not far now. I don't think it's far. Sat now says one mile until we hit Arundel. Then we've got to work our way towards the. The castle, I don't think Arundel's very big. It's one of those places I've been past it all the time. You know, when you go sort of to Brighton, you know, this is the way I'd normally go to Brighton, and you always go past it. And uh, it's really impressive, the castle, and you're like, wow, look at that castle. I didn't realise it, you know, it was from the 10th century. I didn't realise, I think it was 1038. So it's almost a thousand years old, this castle. And I didn't realise it was that old, because it just looks, you know, fantastic fantastic condition you know you imagine it's much newer than that but uh, we're going to have a look at this i think you're going to be a bit impressed with this one right town center let's have a little bit of a head in to arundel town center it's also the uh, queen's jubilee weekend the 70th jubilee so you're going to see a few uh, flags and bunting i suspect coming through arundel today someone's getting into it I mean, this is proper, proper castle. <laughs> proper Game of Thrones. There you go, there's a bit of one of the, one of the keeps. Look, 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 oh, I've got to go this way. I wanted to go that way. Let's come around. Oh, it's like this is part of it here, is it? There's a bit of the turret over there, look. This is all part of it, castle entrance. As you can see it's big, it's impressive. Here we go, is the bunting. I don't think I've ever been into Arundel uh, Town Centre before either. Not pleasant, isn't it? Looks like we've got something going on. We've got some uh, medieval <laughs> goings on here. Oh, I should have bought my drone. The weather's actually pretty decent now. Look at this. I want to go in now. Look, look. Well, I mean, there you go, through the trees there, look. Look. Look at that. A thousand years old. Incredible. 
Why didn't I bring my drone? Now I'm wishing I brought my drone. But not to worry, here comes the stock footage. Castle. <laughs> I'm not going to go in. I do quite. I could go in, couldn't we? And we could do now. I'm not going to go in. Not today. So there we go. Arundel Castle. Some of the locals there enjoying themselves. But uh, as you can see, a load of history. A very interesting place. So uh, highly recommend you come down. Take a look at this. Unfortunately, you can't quite see it properly from down here. So I've just walked into town. Got myself a uh, coffee to the music and I've spotted a piece of Victoria sponge, <laughs> my favourite cake, right out the window, Victoria sponge it is, look at this, no you can't see it from there, sorry you can't see it, ooh, look at that, mmm, taste of England, Victoria sponge, mmm, Oh yeah. Mm. Cheers. So there we go, Arundel Castle. What a place. What an impressive looking structure. Built by in 1038 originally, then uh, I think it's 1138, it was all built, the stone structure, you know, so it was reinforced with the stone structure. Built by William the Conqueror to keep the French out. <laughs> and it did its job. But uh, there we go, I hope you've enjoyed that little uh, review stroke trip. I do quite like doing these, I know it's up there, that's shame there's so much tree cover here, because you can't see it very well. But um, yeah, the bike, actually the Tiger, has really really impressed me on this one i have to say i know i have ridden it as part of the adventure bike shootout but it's easy to get sort of caught up in all that sort of italian exotica and those and those adventure bikes which are more about performance and handling and speed you know it tends the tiger tends to get sort of put play second second fiddle to those sorts of bikes if that's the sort of test you're doing you know where you're testing the performance of the bikes it's not up there with the likes of the multistrada and the super adventure it's just not you know it's definitely more of a gs it's more of a a mile muncher you know it is a mile muncher this thing and what it does offer which is better than the gs is it is a more performance orientated machine than the gs but it still has the comfort and the ease of use which the GS has and is so well known for, you know? That, that's the beauty of this thing. And as I said in my, you know, adventure bike shootout test, it's a brilliant all-rounder, this, which gives you a taste of everything, you know? And uh, it's just so easy and lovely to ride. It's actually really impressed me on this little ride out today. And I've had this bike for a couple of weeks to use and I've been like oh I must do a review on that Tiger I must get out on that Tiger you know I wasn't excited about getting out to ride it but now I have I wish I'd used it more so any niggles with the Tiger surprisingly few actually it's such a, a well-mannered machine you can even find neutral easy on it you know I know I said the speed triple you struggle to find neutral not on this niggles wise you know, I, I don't think I have any. My only niggle, I think my only niggle is something I always come back to with the Triumphs. I think it's the dash. You know, you don't get enough information on the screen for an adventure bike. I mean, what is my range till empty? Don't know. You know, all that sort of information that you want. What's my trip? Don't know. All the information you want on an adventure bike, you want it on screen, don't you? You want it there all the time. 
and it's all sort of hidden away on here you know you've got to go into all the menus to try and find this stuff out and when you're trying to ride you don't want to be going into menus and distracting yourself from the road you know i just want it all on the screen there's plenty of room here for it there's all this down the side a bit more information triumph please of what's going on with the bike my trip and fuel information all, all that sort of stuff have it on the screen but apart from that i can't think of any other niggles i mean even the, the throttle response is lovely the quick shifter blippers really really nice you know with a shaft drive you'd expect maybe you'd have some you know knockiness i don't know it's just really smooth even with the shaft drive i thought the shaft drive would make it a bit abrupt as you change gear you know and go on the throttle not at all absolutely lovely so um yeah it, it, it's a bloody good bike the target if you've got the opportunity to test ride one i really suggest you do because it's uh it's well worth a look if you're in the market for an adventure bike rather than just going out and buying yet another gs try one of these this is power level one which is full power <laughs> What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Oh, <laughs>